love the Whoa. part. Awesome video. I especially like the part where Jesus came breaking through that wall. How about you? I got a few goosebumps on that one. See that little kid, Jesus number one on the back? Yeah, that's a jersey that we ought to pay attention to. Good stuff. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper today. The sacrifice Christ made for each and every one of us that we might know God's great love and mercy in the everyday things of our lives. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together into this worship center today. You have promised to meet with us when we gather by the name of Christ Jesus, and indeed that's what we're doing. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you pour out your Holy Spirit in a mighty way, in a life-transforming way. And help us, Lord, to focus on you, to worship you, to honor you, and to be made more and more like Christ as we pray in his name. Amen. As we use some of these songs this morning to prepare ourselves uh, for, for worship, there's some good news in here, so sing out loud.
conqueror of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So let's take the next couple moments and fill these out again. The sweet rock and roll lost uh, Pioneer, Gus Domino Pass. And that's even predating me, so that's how old that is. But uh, I like Happy Days, so I know the song. <laughs> you may cry when you say goodbye. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. A hard teaching to try to make sense out of in many ways. But Jesus here prepares us to share in his supper. Jesus' words do prepare us to share in his supper. Now, it is the Lord's Supper that we will share in together in a few moments. You don't have to be a member of, of Open Arms. This could be the very first time you're worshiping with us. Uh, go through a whole list of what could be barriers to participating, and there are no barriers. The invitation that we're going to have today in sharing in the elements of the Lord's Supper is that if we want to begin to follow Jesus or continue to follow, continue to follow Jesus and allow him to shape our lives, we are invited to participate by faith and receive Christ Jesus in new ways and fresh ways. To receive his forgiving love, maybe for the very first time or for the umpteenth time, which is a very good thing. So keep that in mind. That this supper that we share is for each and every one of us. You can see in, in the program here that there's four places where we can read about the institution of the Lord's Supper. The last meal Jesus had on the night that he was betrayed, he had that meal with his disciples. And it's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and in 1 Corinthians, believe it or not. And I invite you to go ahead and read those passages at some time this week. You'll see there's page numbers next to the Bible verses there. Those pages correspond to the Bibles we use here at Open Arms. And if you want one of those Bibles so you can find these things easily, grab one of those Bibles, put your name in it, start reading it. And uh, Lori always makes sure that we need a Bible in place for the next service that it's done. So, so help us with that. Now as we read from John chapter 6 about eating flesh and drinking blood and so forth, it sounds a little gory. Sounds a little unsettling, to say the least. Well, Jesus' teaching was misinterpreted in the ancient world. It was misinterpreted in the ancient world. In fact, the early church was accused of cannibalism. Now, that's an attractive thing, wasn't it? Yeah, cannibalism. I have a charge and an answer to a charge from an ancient writing. I want to read it for you. Here it is. You Christians are the worst breed ever to affect the world. You deserve every punishment you can get. Nobody likes you. That sounds like junior high, doesn't it? Nobody likes you. <laughs> it would be better if you and your Jesus had never been born. We hear that you are all cannibals. You eat the flesh of your children in your sacred meetings. Here's the answer. That story is probably based on reports that we share together a meal of the body and blood of Christ. That we do. But it is not human flesh we eat. It is bread and wine we consecrate to commemorate our Lord's death. The charge of cannibalism, indeed the very act of celebrating the Lord's Supper in the first century and the early church really, led others to persecute the early church. You see, it was such a significant ritual, if you will, in the early church, and even for today, it was a symbol of a life transformation that put people at odds with society as they chose to follow after Christ. And in many ways, we are put at odds with our society as we choose to follow after Christ as well. Have you noticed that in journeying with Jesus, that some of the things that our world considers kind of normal and natural and 
just doesn't seem to fit with our journey with him. So it was ensuring the Lord's Supper. The charges were made. House churches were destroyed. People were imprisoned. Some were even killed because of sharing the elements of the Lord's Supper way back then. And indeed, in places in our world today, there are people, fellow followers of Christ, brothers and sisters of ours who are being persecuted because of their journey with Jesus. Maybe the charge now isn't cannibalism. But following Christ still can be very costly, even in the world in which we live. Well, if we're not cannibals, then what are we doing here? I put it in bold print, all capital letters in the program. Eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of Man is the act of placing our faith in Him for life itself. It's the act of placing our faith in Christ Jesus to center our lives around Christ, who he is, what he has done, what his demands are upon our lives, eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of Man, is journeying with Jesus, walking with him, following after him, obeying him in the everyday things of life. Learning to ask him before we make decisions, Lord, what do you want me to do? Now, I'm like maybe everybody else in the room, or maybe you're different from me, but too often I seem to make decisions and then try to ask God afterwards to bail me out of something that maybe I shouldn't have done. Were the difficulties could have been cared for if I would have spoken to him first, gotten directions from him first, and then made the choice. See, this idea of eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of Man is not merely for today. Obviously, it is for today. But more than that, we carry with us, moment by moment and day by day, the call of God through Christ to follow after Him step by step by step through our day. <coughs> Placing him, once again I say it, at the center of our lives. The very reason why we do the things that we do and the reason why we don't do some other things. The reason why we have certain attitudes. The reason why we have certain reactions to other people. Is because of him and our life-giving connection with him. Jesus talks about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And Jesus' words illustrate his sacrifice for us. We read in the scripture that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And after he had given thanks to the Heavenly Father, he took that bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. God's Bible lets us know that in a similar fashion, after the supper, Jesus took the cup. And after thanking the Father, he took the cup and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink. This is my blood. This is the blood of the new covenant, the new testament, the new thing that God is going to do by my sacrifice, so that there might be forgiveness for any and all sin. And we're instructed in God's Bible that whenever we eat and drink, we do so in remembrance of Christ Jesus, and indeed as an encouragement to continue to follow after him. Now God's Bible declares that because of sin, someone has to die. Apart from Christ, we pay the penalty for our own sin. Not a very good prospect. But Jesus has willingly suffered and died for each and every one of us. The one who left all the glories of heaven to be born as a Galilean peasant carpenter. To live a sinless life, a perfect life. And then to offer himself for us so that we might have a way out of our sin. So that we don't have to pay the penalty for our sin. He's taking care of it already. Now if we want to pay the penalty for our own sin, we can say, thank you, I don't want what Jesus has done for me. I'll do it. I'll take it. <coughs> Dumb idea. <coughs> Not a good choice. Compared to who Christ is and what he offers to each and every one of us. 
In, reali in reality, it takes a perfect sacrifice to take care of our sin and indeed the sin of the entire world. And Christ Jesus is that perfect sacrifice for our sin because he is God who is in human form, who gave himself for us. Now, I believe that wholeheartedly. It's not always easy to explain what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. And the life transformation that must continue to take place in and through our lives. But I find the simplest reaction, if you will, is to keep saying yes to him. Keep saying yes. Keep asking him, what do, what do you want? And then keep saying yes to him. One of the things that we find that we believe is a free Methodist church, our denomination that we belong to or whatever, is that Jesus is with us when we share his suffering. Jesus is with us when we share his suffering. I don't want to read you just a couple of short paragraphs from what's called the Book of Discipline. Ooh, right? <laughs> Guidelines for churches and pastors and so forth. But here's what it says. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament of our redemption by Christ's death to those who rightly, worthily, and with faith receive it. The bread which we break is a partaking of the body of Christ, and likewise the cup of blessing is a partaking of the blood of Christ. The Supper is also a sign of the love and unity that Christians have among themselves. Christ, according to his promise, is really present in the sacrament. But his body is given, taken, and eaten only after a heavenly and spiritual manner. No change is effected in the element. The bread and wine are not literally the body and blood of Christ, nor is the body and blood of Christ literally present with the elements. The elements are never to be considered objects of worship. The body of Christ is received and eaten in faith. So what are, we, what are we supposed to do then? Well, each and every one of us is invited to participate in the, in the Lord's Supper, in Jesus' Supper. We're invited to participate, to say yes to him, receive his forgiving love, and to follow after him. 1 John chapter, 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 read it this way. We have an advocate with the Father. Advocate, think in terms of a defense attorney. A really, really, really good defense attorney. You know, from several years ago, Dream Team, defense attorney. Matlock. Blanco, Bronco, Matlock. Yeah. Someone even better than, than that. To stand with us in the presence of God and say, I've got this, Father. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So what are we going to do? What's our reaction? What's our response? What will we do right now? Grab your connection card, if you will, please. Maybe one of these next steps makes sense in your spiritual journey right now. First, I invite you to read the next section from John chapter 6. Verses 60 through 71 for next week, and ask God to reveal the truth that is there. Maybe today is a day to accept Jesus' forgiveness for the very first time and to start following Him every day. Maybe today is a day to ask Christ to continue remaking our lives by His forgiving love. I want God to continue His recreating work in my life. So, would you pray for me this week? Because I want to take that step in my spiritual journey. Yeah. And I'll be praying with you and for you as you take your steps in your journey with Christ. And thankfully, on Wednesday night, our prayer team will pray confidentially for all of us yeah. as we follow the Lord who loves us. <coughs> Maybe another step we could take is to share the good news about Jesus with someone. I left a blank there if you want to jot down somebody's initials or nickname or, or whatever. Someone that you sense to really benefit from knowing Christ, and that includes just, that includes everybody. But is there a certain person that comes to mind, 
Or maybe your next step is to return next Sunday or stay or leave, or maybe you've got another step God wants you to take. I didn't know what it was, so I put a blank line there. In a few moments, as we share the Lord's Supper, what we're going to do, we're going to come down this aisle over here and make our way across the front to receive the elements of the supper. <laughs> if you would like to, there's a basket over here. If you'd like to place any financial gifts you bring to support God's work through open arms, you can put them in the basket there. It's also a place we can put our connection cards with the next steps that we're taking in our spiritual journeys and then come and receive the elements of the Lord's Supper. Now, you don't have to put anything in this basket at all in order to participate in the Lord's Supper. But if you'd like to, you're welcome to do that. We're going to invite people to come forward, but if you'd prefer to be served where you're seated, once everyone has come through, just kind of flag me down so I know. Yeah. Uh, so that I see, and then we bring the elements to you as well. Okay? So I'll need some helpers today. Okay, Pat? Charles, you want to help me too? Please? As I said, we're going to have everyone come down this aisle over here, come across the front, tear off a piece of bread that Pat's holding, dip it in the cup that Charles is holding, and then eat with thanksgiving for what Jesus has done for you. You, my friends, are invited to the table of the Lord's feet. Oh, my God. 
there anyone else who would like to be served when they're seated? I think 
Andy Grace really likes that song. <laughs> Don't join the worship music team, huh? Looking at me like you're crazy. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> we can experience God's crazy love for each and every one of us every moment of every day. If we keep saying yes to Him. So let's see what God wants to do in and through our lives this coming week. Remember that Jesus loves you. Remember, my friends, that Jesus likes you. Remember, Jesus wants you. And that Jesus wants to hang out with you. So let him do it. And let's live life in the very presence of God. Thank you for choosing to be here tonight. This is amazing day.